What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here, and in today's tutorial we're going to be uh, covering the topic of exoskeletons in Revit. Well, actually, I'm going to be talking about exoskeleton structures. Basically what that means is exo means outside. So basically the whole structure of the building is on the outside. Uh, there are some amazing buildings in the world that uh, take uh, this approach. Basically you take all of the columns, more not all of them, but a lot of the, the main columns and beams and place them on the outside of the facade. It makes the whole building look interesting and kind of industrial-like. I, I really like that uh, kind of design approach. So in today's tutorial I was thinking about showing you uh, how can you do something like that in Revit, uh, what would be the approach and I'm going to be building a quick little uh, exoskeleton building in Revit. So that's what we're going to be doing in today's tutorial. Now before I start with that, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial. It actually helps me out with the YouTube algorithm a lot. And also make sure to subscribe. Uh, I make useful Revit tutorials each week. I make multiple tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And also I create some uh, advanced Revit courses. While I create beginner, intermediate, as well as advanced level courses. Uh, they're all available on my website, balkanarchitect.com. That's going to be the first link in the description just below the video. So make sure to check it out if you're interested in a more of an in-depth, longer approach. These courses are all longer from one hour up to 16 hours long. I've got like uh, a, a lot of courses. I've got uh, over 90 hours of content on that website. So make sure to check it out. And also, if you would like my Revit project files, uh, like this file that we're going to be creating today or any other Revit file that they have. Uh, well, they're all available on my Patreon page. That's going to be the second link in the description. So just below the video. Make sure to check that out as well. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. So let's immediately get started by going here to Models, then going to New. And for the template file, I'm just going to choose my own custom Balkan Architect template, the metric version. Uh, if you're interested in this template, either the metric or the imperial version, both are available on my website, balkanarctic.com. The link will be in the description. Uh, it's going to be the third link in the description. Okay, so let's just click OK and then we can uh, get started. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, place just a couple of grid lines. So I'm just going to place one here, just like that, and another one maybe six meters uh, behind that, something like that. There we go, perfect. Also, I can extend this a little bit. Uh, I believe this is going to be a bit of a longer <laughs> building, so let's go like that. Uh, next, let's move here to the south elevation, so just open that up. And then what you want to do is, here, I'm just going to move this up to 4 meters and then add an additional level by going here to the datum panel and hitting on level. And that level is going to be 4 meters above that one, so we just have uh, three levels here in a row and four meters is the distance between them. Uh, next, what I like to do before creating any type of a uh, more complex construction, just to make sure that everything aligns properly and everything looks exactly how I want it, instead of going straight to columns and beams, what I tend to do is go first uh, to the model line tool. Now I've explained this in one of my previous videos. Uh, the model line tool uh, allows you to create the construction a little bit before the actual construction and the point of that is because it allows you just to be a bit more precise because uh, Revit beams and columns tend to go all over the place because they're trying to kind of figure out their own methodology of connecting and they can mess up your model from time to time. So I like to start with this and then immediately we're going to get this prompt asking us where we want Want to draw in which work plane. Now, in this case, we don't really have any work planes or uh uh, or any uh, any reference planes created, but what we do have are a couple of those grids. So if I move here to name, I do have the option to choose one of the grids. So I'm just going to choose grid one, click OK, perfect. Uh, next, I'm just going to start here arbitrarily, maybe at this point, move down at the angle of 60 degrees, then go, oops, go from the same point. Oops, I have an extra line here. Uh, then I'm just going to move up again at the uh, at 60 degrees, up to here. Perfect. Then I'm going to go. Oops, it's kind of hard to play around with these lines. Anyways, uh, again, let's go down at 60 degrees, and then up. And yeah, you guessed it, 60 degrees. And then I'm just going to go down again, and then up again, and then straight down. I'm going to go up to this side, 
like that, go down here, and also make something that looks like this. Uh, now this part we can perhaps trim and extend, so I'm just going to go here to modify, trim and extend to corner, and fix this up. Perfect. And finally, uh, let's go again to model lines, and then I'm going to go from here up to here, from here up to here, and repeat the same process on this side. So I have something that looks like a nice little exoskeleton for kind of a floating building, and I really like the way that this turned out. So the next step is to start adding actual construction elements. So the first element is going to go, go here to structure and choose beam. And for the beam, uh, I'm going to choose one of the concrete beams. Now in this case, it's already loaded in because again, as I said, I'm using my own customized template that already has everything loaded in. But feel free to go here to load family and find this uh, concrete rectangular beam. I'm going to go with the 300 by 600 millimeter type. And I can just use pick lines and then pick these lines but make sure that they're on the correct level. So I need one on level two, and then I need one on level three. Perfect. Hit the escape key a couple of times, and there we go. Next, you want to move back to the south elevation, uh, go to the column tool, and then for the column, again, here in the properties, let's find the type, and I want, again, a concrete column. Uh, let's go with the square 300 by 300 millimeter type. Next, let's move here, and then I'm just going to go from here up to here. So you don't want to go exactly here to the point. Now what Revit tends to do is kind of mess this up, so what I like to do is extend and go all the way outside the beams. Then you can move down and connect it to the beams, and then it tends to look all right. So this should go there. Perfect. So now as you can see it looks perfect, and when you connect it to the beams, sometimes it looks fine, sometimes it messes it up, so that's why I prefer this approach. Again, let's go here to columns, and then let's extend this a little bit up here into the beam. Same thing here. Perfect. So uh, this might uh, give you some little errors when it comes to connecting. So if you're doing this as a precise structural model, maybe this isn't the best approach. But when it comes to just creating cool aesthetic models, this is much better because it, well, it actually looks how it should and it doesn't go all crazy. So let's maybe shoot past it a little bit, then go back. Perfect. Same thing here. There we go, we can extend it even here, but as you can see, when you go to this point, it kind of drops down and it looks uh, bad, so let's not do that. Uh, and then, well, this one should probably go down, all the way down here, perfect. And then we can perhaps select these two, let's hold the control key, select these two, go to the mirror tool with the draw access option, and then let's move like this, perfect. And then uh, we can, let's see, we can probably copy this one from here to here. Hold the control key, select all of these, and then mirror them again using the draw access tool. Make a vertical line. Okay, that's perfect. So as you can see, we have saved a lot of time by uh, just mirroring things around. So it can be a good uh, way or a good approach for saving time when it comes to working in Revit. Okay, so uh, with that done, once we have uh, one uh, whole construction completed, we can just select this, go to level one, and then we can just go to copy, unconstrain that, and move it here. Go to the 3D view. And as you can see, now we have two of these. Now, of course, you can connect them, so you can go into a level two, and then you can add additional beams running horizontally like this. Now, be careful, it can mess your model up. In this case, well, luckily it didn't, but again, be careful when doing any uh, of these actions. Uh, Revit tends to kind of freak out from time to time and do everything quite awful, so just keep that in mind. Then here we have to find the kind of the midpoint, the midpoint here. Hopefully this is correct. It makes sense to double check everything in the 3D view. And yeah, that looks perfect. And then let's go back into level two beam. Now keep in mind, as you can see here, uh, beams are kind of grayed out and we cannot really edit them. Well, if you want to retain the ability to edit these beams, what you simply have to do is uh, you have to go here to the, 
a properties panel for the view, find the view range settings, and then just uh, make sure that both here are unlimited, hit apply, okay, and now as you can see, you can select those beams. Let's go back to the 3D view just to double check if everything looks fine, and it does. We can select these beams, go to copy, paste, align to selected levels, and then place them on level 3 as well. Perfect. Okay, yeah, okay, it's not perfect. <laughs> okay, I guess I messed up here a little bit. So we have to kind of move them around. Uh, so for level 3, let's see. Okay, in level 3 we cannot see anything. Why is that? Well, because we have to make sure that this is set to fine level of detail. Also, we need to go to the view range again, and as I said, this should be set to unlimited. Hit apply. Now you can see everything. And then this should be moved from here up to this point. Let's see. Yeah, perfect. And then this should be moved from there up to this point. So it is a little bit of a trial and error and you can mess things up. I tend to leave these mistakes that they make in the videos just because I, I feel it's a, oops, uh, I kind of messed that up a little bit. Uh, I, I, th I think it's a, a good, good thing to learn what to do when you mess up because you're definitely going to mess up at some point. Okay, this one we don't need so we can delete that one. Perfect, so now we have our construction. Uh, now, of course, inside of this, we can add the actual building component. So for example, you can go here to uh, level two, and then you can go to floor, uh, boundary, and then create a floor inside of this, just like that, finish, go to the 3D view. Perfect, you can move that up. So copy, paste, align to selected levels, level three, now, I like to offset that a little bit because I like to have the construction show even on top. So I'm going to uh, go to, let's go to South Elevation, go here to Fine Level of Detail and also Wireframe, and then uh, we can just move this down, hopefully. Yeah, just like that. Go to the 3D view. Perfect, I think it looks really cool. And then finally, of course, you can add something like uh, some sort of a curtain wall inside just to make it look more interesting. So let's go here to level two, architecture, wall, let's find storefront, and then uh, let's do a simple rectangle here, kind of like that. Hit the escape key a couple of times, go to the 3D view, I think this looks lovely. Now you can select the curtain wall by hovering over one of them, hit the tab key to select the whole chain, and then go to attach top base and just attach it to that floor so it doesn't kind of overshoot. And feel free to just delete the top elements which we don't need anymore. So there we go, this looks very, very cool. I really like it. Of course, you have to figure out some sort of a staircase to get to this, or maybe it's an extension of some building or something like that. But I do think that it looks really cool, especially with these V columns, V-shaped columns. And finally, let's go into level one. And then here, I'm going to go to the structure tab, go to isolated foundations, and then choose the, uh, just the, um, footing rectangular, the larger one, and then just flip it around using the space key, and then you can kind of place it here below all of these. Oops, it can be kind of tricky to pinpoint the actual position, but there we go, looks perfect. And there we go, we have a cool looking structure with the exoskeleton. I'm guessing that uh, we could have done this with maybe a bit of a more thinner uh, columns, but I really like the look, I really like the aesthetic. So there we go, this is our exoskeleton construction in Revit. So I hope you have learned something new and I hope you enjoyed the workflow and tell me in the comment section below, do you do this in this way? Do you think it maybe has some mistakes? Uh, perhaps because we don't, didn't connect the columns perfectly, it does tend to work not perfect, but as you can see when you connect them, they kind of go at an odd angle, which I don't really like. Some people like that. I, I tend not to 
prefer this okay this one's kind of crazy but anyways <laughs> there we go so please tell me in the comment section below what you think about the workflow and also tell me if you have any ideas for any future tutorials again as i said if you would like this project file as well as all of my other revit project files check out my patreon that's going to be the uh, for uh, the second link in the description and of course for any advanced courses maybe a complete uh, uh, complete uh, course on steel fabrications in revit well for that you have to check out my website balkanarctic.com okay so that's pretty much it thank you for watching and i'll see you in a couple of days with another tutorial have a nice day